Hello everybody, welcome to The Puzzle Shop. So today I'm gonna to bring you guys along and show you exactly what I'm doing throughout the whole day. So I'm starting in the early morning and we're gonna go until I quit at night. And I'm just gonna update this video every half hour or so and show you guys what I'm working on, what I do throughout the whole day. Thought it'd be an interesting video. Um, let me know what you guys think. And I just wanna provide more content for everybody who's you know, buying the sundial box and interested on where it is um, in the process of being built and how production is going. So I, I hope I can update everything. Um, it gets a little tricky uh, showing some of the pieces and showing what I'm doing on here because I don't want to give anything away on the puzzle. I don't want people to know what's coming. So I'm going to have to try and hide some stuff, but I'll try to show you guys everything that I can on the box. What these are, are I call them tool cradles. Um, I just designed it myself. The issue was that I'd be working here on the machine and I go and reach over here somewhere and then I come back and see how this tool is tilted. So now when the machine goes to grab it, it's actually not gonna grab the tool because the pull stud's all the way tilted to the side. And so it's not gonna pick up the tool. But with this, little uh, frame around it it doesn't actually tilt it stays upright so i'm going to put these over the top here and just screw them down and then i'm not going to have that issue anymore Okay, so uh, one of the things I actually have to do right now is take down the pre-order on the website because um, I've actually oversold this box. I only want to sell maximum 400 because I don't want to go crazy. And we've already sold 401. So on this for sale page, I got to take down the sundial sign up. So this is uh, Bolt CMS I'm just using to edit my web page. My brother Michael is a web programmer and he set this up for me. I'm gonna get this machine warmed up as I write down my eight tasks so I run it through a 15 minute spindle cycle to warm up the bearings keep those bearings lasting a little longer all right so it's after lunch time now I just got off the phone with a sales rep from boss lasers I'm looking at this LS 2436 because I crunched some numbers and it's gonna take um, us about like four to five hundred hours or more to deburr or um, to, to prep our parts after they come off of the CNC like this you know we need to break them out of these tabs we need to cut all these tabs and that's gonna take us hours and hours to do and it's gonna maybe break scrap some parts if we're not super careful and if we don't go slow because before they get glued down they're brittle so if we got a laser that could do all that for us and all we have to do is take the board off of the CNC, put it in the laser, cut the parts out, finish that last little 15,000 step that we leave from the router, then we could save ourselves hundreds of hours worth of time and get the product to the customer faster and also have a laser in the shop that would you know, pay for itself and we could use it in other applications down the road on other boxes so it's really tempting to get this laser so it was good to talk to the rep and uh i'm gonna make a decision later this week on that but uh 
Let's check the 3D printer. Got the 3D printer going. That's going to print for another six hours and 54 minutes. We're going to, we're making one of these, but out of plastic because this one was getting a little bit sticky with the Gorilla Glue and I just thought it better to make them out of plastic. Um, so we'll see how it turns out. This is just the first one. And if it works out good, then I'll print some more. All right, so the day's going good so far. Um, I've got most of the eight tasks that I wrote down crossed off. I still have to assemble the box, which means basically put the sundial together, which I just cut out over the past couple of days. Put that together, you know, make sure everything's working. Um, that's a big task because some things, some parts are, are I need to redo and I'd like to recut. I'm kind of waiting on the 3D printer because I'm making that new glue form, the curved side panel. So mm, it's kind of a tough one to cross off. Sometimes I do that to myself. I write down something that's kind of hard to cross off, but oh well, I'll just do the best I can today. And the box is going together really well. I'm really happy with how the parts are turning out because they're fitting together really nice. So that's good news there. I'm happy about that. And I was able to do some other stuff off camera that I haven't showed, but things are going pretty good. And I'm happy with today. Um, so right now I'm gonna go and do some work on the fourth axis and we'll get some of these side panels cut again. All right, so we're nearing the end of the day and I'm about ready to wrap it up, but it was a really, really good day. Um, I got a lot of stuff done and the boxes are coming along really good. I'm just really happy, I don't know, it's just, things are working out really nice and I'm making permanent changes to the fusion file, to all the jigs and setups here, to the glue up setups and the clamping methods and all that stuff. And when you can make a permanent change to something that, that you fix for the next X amount of boxes you're making, X amount of product, it's a really good sign. It's better than just, you know, fudging things and just working, like just sanding more, or just working harder. Like you wanna work smarter and you wanna eliminate problems so that they never happen again. And that's just been happening all day. So it's good. I'll just show you a couple parts here, not to give any spoilers. If people don't wanna see like anything that, that's inside the box, like don't watch this next minute here, but I don't think it gives anything away. So let me just show you a couple parts I make that I'm excited about. Um, this is just one panel inside the box. And I just, I really like the, the carvings. Um, Everett designed all of these carvings. Some of these are based on the Mayan calendar. And um, it just, when it's in the rest, in the context of the rest of the box, it just looks really cool, really Aztec-y, really Mayan really old and it, I don't know it's just cool to work on them we do a little bit of staining you can see this whole thing is black here as we stain it and you know blow dry it and then we buff it it's a whole process but loving the way these panels turned out I color these um, this is just a piece of catalogs and then I use Gilder's paste uh, Luke Marshall told me about this stuff it's Inca gold and you just rub it on there and it looks it looks better than if i was to like spray paint it and we can lacquer over top of it it's it's much easier to apply than real gold leaf and i'm happy with that so i use that in a few places throughout the box by the way everett's gone at college he left a couple weeks ago and so you're just gonna have to wait for the jokes until he gets back, cause he's gonna be back on spring break. So, you know, I can't fill those shoes. They're too big, you know? So, uh, Everett will be back, he'll visit soon and he'll help us make some boxes. 
In the meantime, I've got to look for somebody to fill his shoes as far as um, the whole production, deburring, assembly. So that's going to be interesting over the next few weeks. Like I said, the sundial box sold out. But if you email me and just ask to be on the sign up sheet or the, the drop off list, I'm sure there's probably going to be 20 to 30 people who, you know, end up not buying a box and you'll be able to uh, pick up where they left off. So don't worry if you didn't make the official, you know, pre order list. Um, you know, this puzzle's still probably going to be available to you if you, uh, if you shoot me one of the earlier emails. Okay. So everybody have a good day and I'll see you later. Goodbye.